It's Medicosis Perfectionalis continuing our rheumatology playlist. In previous videos, we have talked about anti-nuclear antibodies, anti-neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibodies, rheumatoid factors, anti-CCP, anti-double-stranded DNA, anti-Smith antibody. Today, it's time for anti-U1 RNAP antibodies present in lupus as well as mixed connective tissue disease. So, without further ado, let's get started. Here's a list of my previous videos that you should be watching instead of watching TV or YouTube. Oh, my videos are on YouTube? Never mind. No single blood test whatsoever can confirm the diagnosis in rheumatology. Always ask yourself, does the lab test correlate with the clinical picture? You're a doctor. You're not a lab technician. Anti-nuclear antibodies or antibodies against the nucleus reported in titers has to be greater than 1 to 80 to be positive. The higher the titer, the more likely you have an autoimmune disease. But the titer does not correlate with the disease severity or the disease symptoms. Next, antineutrophilic cytoplasmic antibodies. They are antibodies against the cytoplasm of neutrophils and monocyte. They are not associated with arthritis. On the other hand, they are associated with vasculitis. Rheumatoid factors. If ANA antibodies were antibodies against the nucleus and antineutrophilic cytoplasmic antibodies were antibodies against the cytoplasm, rheumatoid factor is an antibody against an antibody like a dog chasing its tail, which is weird. That's why it's a disease. Leading to an immune complex that, lead, that leads to joint inflammation, in this case rheumatoid arthritis. It's sensitive for rheumatoid arthritis, but less specific. If rheumatoid factor is more sensitive for rheumatoid arthritis, anti-CCP is more specific for rheumatoid arthritis. Anti-double-stranded DNA, specific for lupus, not sensitive. They correlate with disease activity, lupus nephritis and lupus vasculitis. Anti-Smith autoantibodies against the Smith protein. What the flip is the Smith protein? Protein complex to six species of nuclear U1 RNP or RNA. It's against the RNA. Remember RNA? Yeah. 25% of lupus patients have anti-Smith antibodies. By definition, anti-Smith is not sensitive because only 25%. If you were one of the unlucky 75%, tough luck. If you are positive anti-Smith, you probably are positive anti-RNP because both of them are antibodies against RNA. Anti-Smith antibodies occur only in lupus patients, which makes them very specific for lupus, but they do not correlate with the disease severity or the disease symptoms. Don't forget to get my 50 hematology cases by going to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. They have questions about bleeding and coagulation. It's gonna be so much fun. You will learn a ton. Now to today's topic, anti-U1 RNP. O2 antibodies. Oh, no kidding. They are antibodies against the cell. Against what precisely? Against SNRNP70. What the what? SN is small nuclear. RNP, ribonucleoprotein. So they are RNA binding protein, which means proteins that bind to RNA. A component of that spliceosome in your nucleus, if you remember your molecular biology. Since this is in the nucleus, therefore anti-U1 RNP is a subtype of anti-nuclear antibody. Hello! We also know, we also call them anti-RNP without the U1, doesn't matter. Found in conditions that have overlap features, has a mixture of rheumatological symptoms, such as mixed connective tissue disease, which we'll talk about later, as well as lupus, because lupus also is a mix of many different symptoms, that's why it's very difficult to diagnose, as well as idiopathic inflammatory myositis. When you have anti-U1 RNP, in a patient with mixed connective tissue disease, they are more likely to develop pulmonary arterial hypertension as well as myositis, which is an inflammation of the muscles. Let's talk about anti-U1 RNP in lupus patients. Only 50 to 30% of patients, by definition, it's not sensitive. Since it's also positive in mixed connective tissue disease, by definition, it's not specific because it's prevalent in many diseases. So how do you know which is which? You don't. 
So anti-U1-RNP can be associated with mixed connective tissue disease, in which case it's very sensitive, or systemic lupus erythematosus, in which case it's neither sensitive nor specific. Thank you very much. The absence of anti-U1-RNP almost excludes the diagnosis of mixed connective tissue disease because it's very sensitive. Anti-U1-RNP together with anti-double-stranded DNA plus a clinical picture suggestive of lupus. This is lupus, honey. This is not mixed connective tissue disease. Remember the $63,000 question? Does the lab result correlate with the clinical picture? If anti-U1-RNP is together with anti-Say-Smith antibody and you have symptoms of lupus, it's lupus. It's not mixed connective tissue disease. Also known as that anti-U1-RNP and anti-double-stranded DNA usually occur together. That's why in my mnemonic about anti-double-stranded DNA, which everything had the two mnemonic, I told you that anti-double-stranded DNA occurs together with anti-U1-RNP. If you remember, if you have a memory of something higher than the fish. Your support is greatly needed. Your support is absolutely appreciated. Please go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. Help me by supporting this channel. I would like to upload more than 10 videos every week, but I need you to support the channel so that I can allocate more time to these awesome videos. Also, by going to Patreon, you will get my 50 hematology cases, as well as my illustrated notes that I'm drawing for all of my videos, including hematology videos, physiology videos, fluids and electrolytes, and even, yes, rheumatology. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the bell, and go to patreon.com to get my cases and my notes. This is Medicosis Perfectionals, where medicine makes perfect sense. I'll see you later. Until then, be safe, stay happy, and study hard.